our show. We are here today with author Leslie Cooster. Leslie, introduce yourself for us, please. Yeah, thank you so much, Catherine. I'm Leslie Cooster. I'm the author of the new book, Seven Keys to Seven Figures, The Women Entrepreneur's Guide to Money and Freedom. And I wrote the book because of my experiences and what I learned from building my business, which is called Back from Bali, which is a women's clothing company where I manufacture clothing in Indonesia, import it into the U.S. and sell it online. That sounds wonderful. And I love how you have tied the book to how you grew your own business. So tell us a little bit more about that journey. It's a long one. (laughs) (laughs) that's that's sort of there's a joke I actually put it in the book uh, and the joke goes something like um, it took me 20 years to be an overnight success and that is really truly my story I I was an entrepreneur for more than 20 years doing okay uh, but not really successful regarding um, income money you know success all of that And I made a decision really after 20 years of being in business that I wanted to change that, that I wanted more money, I wanted more success. I I knew I could be doing better than I had been doing. And I did it and I made all these changes. And when I reflected on how in the world did I do it? How did I bring a business from five figures, which it was for 20 years, uh, to multiple seven figures, Um, in a very short time after making that decision, that's what I was going to do. And from what I learned from that process is the material that um, I wrote the book about. One of the things that I love about the book is just how open and honest you are. And one of the first things you start with is this whole mindset around money. And you just touched on it, this idea that you just you made a decision you wanted to make more money. Why is that so difficult? Oh, you know, it's 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 our money stories. And this is what I really discovered is that I was as we all really are, whether we realize it or not, kind of living life and making choices in life a lot based on what we were taught as children and what we heard from our families and whether money is good or bad, something to speak about or not to speak about, whether it's important for a, for a woman to make it or should some, you know, a man make it instead, um, value of, 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 of what a woman is, all of these things influence our own ideas of whether we should be making a lot of money or not making a lot of money. And I started to reflect on my money story and what I learned from my mom, what I learned from my father. And in my case, it was definitely taught that it wasn't that important that I made money. That was what was more important uh, regarding money is if I married someone who made money. And I sort of kind of bought into that and just kind of felt that it wasn't necessarily my responsibility uh, to, you know, really buy the dream house or whatever it is. And after running my business, um, so I did make money, but after running the business for 20 years at kind of a mediocre level, I would say, which which wasn't bad. And, you know, for some people that might be enough, but for me, I got to a point where I felt it wasn't enough. And it wasn't just wasn't enough money. It wasn't enough independence. It wasn't enough empowerment. It wasn't enough feeling proud of myself, honestly. And I wanted to change that. And so what happened is I started to really reflect on my money story, on the things I believed. I started to realize that actually, maybe they're not true. This is, you know, maybe, maybe the idea, like, if I become more successful, I'll lose my freedom, for example, is a thought I had, maybe that actually isn't true. Or I used to think things like, you know, I'm a very spiritual person, a reflective person. 
And I'm not a money person. So it was either this or it was that. And I started to think, well, why can't you be a reflective person and make money? And I, I really started to ask myself these very important questions, realizing that I had been trapped for very long into ideas that weren't necessarily true. And once I made a decision, I don't think I need to follow those anymore. Why can't I buy the dream house or contribute to the dream house? And once I started to ask myself those questions, everything started to unfold. So let's let's unpack this a little bit, because to me, this is such a vital discussion. Many of us have, I'm going to use the word brainwashed, brainwashed into believing things that aren't true about money and ourselves and our relationship with money. How do you unpack those? How do you find those false falsehoods that you've grown up with and accepted? Honesty, that's how you have to do it. Um, you have to become honest with yourself. And I, what I suggest, um, since we, you know, we're talking about writing and we're writers here, is to is to write, which is what I would do. So I would get out my journal and I started to write down all of those thoughts I had about uh, myself and money. I mean, literally wrote them down, like things like um, my false beliefs that it's not my responsibility. It's, you know, someone else's responsibility or that I'm not a money person. I started to write down all of these ideas. I also started to write it down in a story form. And that might be something that could be helpful for other people that you really just get out a pen and paper or your computer out and kind of an essay form, start writing about how you grew up and what you heard growing up from your mom, your dad, or your caregiver, whoever it is, and and write, you know, one, two, three pages of your money story. And so you start to understand the beliefs that you have. Once you have those and start to have an idea, you can, uh, I, I like to kind of bullet them out in that case. So, so they become more clear. And then I just started to challenge them for, for like what I said before, that putting almost the and in between the two opposites instead of the but. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, I want to have more money, but I don't want to lose my freedom. So I would change it on the paper to I want to have more money and I have more freedom. And I think this is a way of uh, almost brainwashing ourselves and re- and re-believing what is really possible because what the book's about is it's really possible. Like it is really possible to build a multiple seven figure business or $8 million business if that's what you want or, or more, it's all possible. Um, it's It just depends on Um, your clarity about what you really, really want, and whether you will take the action to do it. Now, largely, you've written this book to women. Do you feel like this concept of, of deciding that you're worth pursuing money, that deciding that anything is possible? Do you feel like that message is more important for women than anyone else? Yeah, totally. Because, um, I don't think, um, money is a very like feminine subject and Uh women you know we we're very relational that's what we are we we want to be included we want to be liked okay we don't want to be different than others and a woman who speaks about you know I want to build a big business I want to make lots of money all that kind of stuff that's acceptable from a man for sure but it's really looked down upon um for a woman from both women and from men as well. And I've had experiences of that. So I would like with this book and with what I wrote about to kind of free women uh, from the, 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 the bonds, right, so to speak, that keep you trapped in your ideas of, of money and realize that what money is just, is not good, it's not bad. It's actually is not either of those things. It simply is an avenue for you to really create the life that you want, you know, and it's a resource, isn't it? 
Yes, it's a resource. And and I think it's important for us to actually love money and want money and I desire. totally agree with you there. <laughs> Right? I want money. <laughs> right. And, and I love money. And once right. I started to love money, I because I I when I when I was starting to make this shift, I you know inundated myself with like gurus, money, you know, money people, money gurus of how to make money and why to make money and all of that. And I was I was really I was literally stopped in my tracks. I was in New York City and it was Thanksgiving. I was crossing the street, uh, walking, and I put on my headphones and I press play. And the money guy gets on and he says something which blew me away, which he said, if you want to have money, you have to want money. And for some reason, that just hit me like like a bomb and i and i just got it in that moment we actually have to want it instead of like yeah it'd be nice to have some you know but you know which is how a lot of people react with it you have to want it mm -hmm. and 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 free yourself from from thinking that's wrong in any kind of way and especially for women why because we want to be independent and we don't want to be trapped in situations where that we can't get out of. And, you know, we as women, we can marry well in terms of financially and we could be divorced and put in a very difficult situation. Um, our spouses could get sick and die. Um, and so in, in researching um, the, the topic of women and money a lot in the interviews I did, it, it was fascinating how I would interview women who were married to wealthy partners and had no idea where the money was. I mean, no idea where they were, uh -huh. where, where the money was, how it was invested, how to access the money. Um, they're given maybe, you know, you know, their credit card bills are paid. They're given, you know, a lot of money that they can use during the month or whatever, but they don't actually have the money. And so that is why I think it's just so critical that women kind of wake up and realize that this is their life and, this is incredibly critical to their ability to 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 have the life that they want and not so they're in control of their life. And, and so this was really my impetus. I, I didn't have a divorce and I didn't have, thank God, a spouse that passed. It came from me that I just really wanted to be able to stand on my own feet more um, and feel a feeling of su success. So well, you have you've definitely written a book that's empowering and it's very practical. You give the seven keys to seven figures. Um, what has been the response to this book? You know, it's it's been great, actually. Uh, I'm I, I'm really happy with the response. Uh, we uh, one of my goals very much was, you know, to get a lot of reviews, which I have done so far. And the pleasure I get from reading those reviews is just incredible. So they're all five star, which I'm really excited about. I, I feel that people were surprised that it was such an easy read. And I'm actually happy to hear that. It, it, I've been told it's not boring. It, it, you could actually read this book in, you know, three days if you want to. Um, also, people were surprised by how much like personal stories I put into it, that it isn't just a business, you know, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, but that I've used like the personal experiences and tragedies that I've had in my life um, as, as lessons in the book and that, and that these experiences have helped me also change things in my business too. Like they work together. So the response has been... Um, has been very positive and it still is it, that this is the beauty of a book. It's, it's not like you get a response and it's over. It just, it continues. Um, and it, I'm excited to get it out there more and more and more. Well, hopefully it will get out there more. I feel like your seven keys are, are just critical to anybody who's trying to build a business. So one final question before we wind things up, 
What is your favorite of the seven keys? I think it's really the seventh key is my favorite because it's maybe the most surprising. And the seventh key is the importance of non-doing, the importance of what I also call empty time in it, meditation time, uh, because it's really critical to when you're building a business that you build the business that you really want and that is authentic to you, that you choose authentic success, whatever that might mean to you. And it means something different to everybody. It could mean working two days a week. It could be uh, building something. It could be living somewhere else. It could be so many different things. But unless you spend time and you have skills that you where you know how to meditate or you know how to slow down or you know how to access uh, your inner self and what you really, really, really want, then you're just going to be following your to-do list all the time and maybe running after somebody else's dream of what they think you should be doing. So we need to, um, with whatever actions we're taking, whatever we just choose to do, we need to check with ourselves as to why are we doing it? Like, why? What is the reason? And, you know, in my case, and just an example, even though I, I keep speaking about the money, ultimately, it wasn't actually money. It was a feeling of empowerment and of standing on my own feet and being able to achieve things. I never in the million years ever thought I could possibly achieve, truly. And and so, but we, we need to understand what those those yearnings are and those strivings are. And without having that downtown time, that empty time, we can't really know what those are. So I really encourage everybody to have a practice to, to figure out what that is, either meditation or going for walks or possibly writing or, you know, and I do um, give a lot of suggestions of that in, in that chapter um, because of that will always give you um, your deeper yearning. So you know the next steps that you should be taking in your life and business. So if anybody wants to read your book or even look at your business, where should they go? Yes. So amazon.com. So is the best place to buy the book. It's on Kindle. It's also a hardback. It's also paperback. So that's the best place to go. However, there is another place to go to, which is my own website has a link that says book on it. And the website is lesliecooster.com. And if you go to that link um, and buy the book through the website, I do give out bonuses there. Um, I have a module of a really great course that I created. Um, and the module is all about how to take action. And there's, there's actually a meditation there as well. So that's also a great place to buy the book. And if you want more information about my business, my business is called Back From Bali. And you could find it on Amazon, Back From Bali, or backfrombali.com on my website. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us and sharing a little bit more about you as, as the author and what you're trying to do with your book. Oh, well, thank you so much. I mean, thank you for, for showcasing it um, in, in the book club. I cannot thank you enough. It's been such a great journey and I'm, I'm very honored. Thank you. Thank you.